Hey yo, hey yo, and welcome back to the letter. It's been a while, but we're back to it. It's been a hectic few weeks, but we're hopefully back to our normal schedule. So uh, let's figure out what's happened to Marianne and her past, because I'm curious. I think it backed up a little bit. I'm not sure how far back. I think probably like a couple sentences. <laughs> I half expected her to be there. I gotta get Maxim back. Hi, Nai Brian Kai. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder. Yeah, we're right here. This is where we were. It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. But it's just whiskey. Don't do that again. Ever. I don't like being... I don't like... I don't remember her accent. <laughs> I don't like being scared. Though I don't believe in the likes of spooks. Being startled is not on top of the list of things Marianne liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach, or he would have gotten on friendly terms with something like a rolling pin. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has Johan's been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, Brother Gurriam? The butler's expression's unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rites. Aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there, though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. The expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost cruel. But neither of them spoke, even as Johan leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, Marianne. what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that, Tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. <laughs> that's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. It would be a, a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing a dead person, isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means there would be such things, such as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright. You haven't noticed anything weird here? A simple enough question on the surface, yet I notice the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't watching his reaction intently. But in his eyes, I see something... dangerous. That depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Yes. Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, <coughs> maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Oh, you're having a great experience. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. Boogeyman. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women lurking about then? Just a woman. A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going over too well. None that I know of. But I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you report it. Immediately. Oh, he got serious. I think that goes without saying. The concern he have on the talk of security is quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns, if but if a bit subdued. Whatever smarmy remark or innuendo he has at the ready never comes through, 
as voices from the dining hall rings out. So, is this a full-time job for you, Ben? Nah, I just freelance mostly uh, for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's Zach. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least not all the time. That would be the magazine photographer, I presume. As always, Miss Wright talks in such kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. I've lost the accent, it's been too long. <laughs> it certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photographer too. Hearing them though seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least, if it's a small scowl, if anything to go by. Is he... Jealous? Ask if he's alright. Try to lighten the mood. Oh, I'm trying to play blind. I'm not gonna look anything up. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Wright. Hey, are you alright there, Whiskey? You're looking like you need a serious drink. What is it that you want to do then? Film. Documentaries mostly. But. Cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing, actually. I'm fine. Just a bit winded from all that moving about. It's been a long day. Lawyer. And the day's not over yet. So if you can excuse the bloodness, you either shape up to help or ship out back to your room and let us do the rest of the work. Oh, why are you so rude? Marianne's so mean. He hesitates, eyes locked firmly on the door that led to the dining hall. Even now, you can still hear Miss Wright and the photographer chit-chat in between shots. It's not my place to say this, but she really does seem to care a lot about you, you know? There's no need to remind me of that. Because you're a piece of shit who likes to cheat on her. A strange smile appears on his face before he shuts his eyes and sighs. Tell the workers that you're all dismissed early. That's nice and all, whiskey. But we really shouldn't just take off. Delays aren't a good thing when it comes to big projects like these. The sooner we tackle certain issues, the better. And I trust you can take care of these issues another day. Don't make me ask again, Mint. Just tell the others they can go home early. And to not worry, they'll still get paid the remaining hours. I don't know what prompted this. With the air he's putting on, though. I know pretty... I know better than to middle and prod further. Besides, fine, you're the boss. Walking out the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go well under his roof. Miss Wright and the photographer are still far too busy in conversation to notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I don't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like blue fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Going to the fire as me stumble upon the family butler once more, who raises a brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bradverst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. Maroid back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. Granted, there were some difficulties at first. The driver didn't know where the Ermagert mansion is. He tried to have us hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble that I didn't care about. The butler didn't understand. But as soon as we told him that it's the haunted mansion over in Ansem Village, he knew just the place. And finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. It gives me the willies too. I would love to snap at him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossoms in the forefront in my mind. One that has somehow bothered me greatly. More than my exasperation over whiskey and this project or wanting all of it to stop. There has been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. Worse. Worse, I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damn you, Uthi? Loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. 
I thought I already moved past this years ago. And it doesn't... And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? Tuesdays are for karaoke and Wednesdays, improv. Usually it's these four guys who did hilarious games. The one with Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favourite. Though I love a good laugh, stand-up comedy isn't my thing. And without Cam or Haruna or any other distraction, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there are several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! I need you for something! It's a good thing that the bartender's a nice fellow. I'd probably have been kicked out of the place by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all he'll have to do is give me an easy smile and a shake of his head, even with his attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him before a couple of times, although he never talks to anyone else except G. The girls used to be all over him too, but he's always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. Asian Joe, that's Ash! All right, all right. What is it? Oh, you have a person avatar thing. Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, par the wine! Per the wine! Uh, I think that's enough alcohol for you, little <laughs> missy. I'm cutting you off. The wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bolts away. I have no hopes of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because what little sense I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wrestling a bolter from a sober man. But it doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot, anyway. He smiles and shakes his head just like I knew he would before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? How you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one really to chat with, I would have gone home. Or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? Their talk would have interested me, would have... Would have kept my attention if I give a damn. But in my current state, I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sound that is the pub. And it would have stayed that way, perhaps, even drowned, if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. And don't pretend like you don't, G. <laughs> it takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a wad of cash on the counter after having too much whiskey counts as tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Oh boy. Luke fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, I'm hearing about the guy. The ab what the absolute fuck? Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. There's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes, she's clean. And she might be able to help you with your... Uh, predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. 
Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. <laughs> so she works for the guy? Mr. Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? Say you have a little faith in me, why don't you? I don't have much and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven! Can't miss me! <laughs> I'm like Shorty over here. What's it that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. She's so different when she's drunk. <laughs> Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. So adds insult to injury, I move directly behind him and just use the top of his head as an armrest. But when he shakes me off, I plop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McAuliffe. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhyme. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. <laughs> you wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. <laughs> you won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. <laughs> One moment, he's an absolute dickhead. And then he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. Ha, <laughs> flat. And I'm not just saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Luke's a catch too. They both are. Ah. But I really cannot, for the love of all things holy, see how they even work out together. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being peck pe peachy right about now, Holmes. <laughs> but nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. A giggle bubbles up as I press my cheek against the cool countertop with my eyes shut tight, just because. Eventually cracking why on eye open, just in case they thought I fell asleep. I grin at Holmes. So, Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexiest sin to boot. <laughs> Marianne! <laughs> Not a private detective, then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Mmm, pants. I take the pants off of... Ah, here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I've been right now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave... you what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? <laughs> this is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. 
This will be what? dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. What is he investigating? This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of despair that comes over the both of them is palpable. If feelings had a taste, it'd be bitterer than the beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking, though thinking doesn't get me far with much, with too much shite in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, <laughs> McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something. As ocht day! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is. Rotten bloke. Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Before I get another word out, there's a hand on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. I quickly slap his hands away the best I can and send him the foulest look I can muster. Take your hands off me, pipsqueak. <laughs> I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. <laughs> but it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from BRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. And we thought it was some joke or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. <laughs> You are such a different person when you're drunk, Marianne. When rich snobs give you that face? No wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay? <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. Oh, has he seen things yet? And he really is pale, paler than before at least. I can see the gears turning in his head on overtime. Suddenly he shoves a card in my hand. On it, his name, Ashton Frey, and his number. But he has second thoughts as he grabs it from me and slips it into my pocket. <laughs> you're cute, pretty boy, but I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if you see anything suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is. Right, 999. Good. Anyway, I have to run. See you, G. Why is the American emergency number like 911? It's like the two numbers farthest away from each other on like... You know, the... I don't think it's called a keyboard on your phone. Uh, the number pad or whatever. Shouldn't it all just be one number? So that, you know, if you're in trouble, it's faster? Or do they keep it separate so you don't, like, misdial? I don't know. Because <laughs> I think in other countries, it's like... Just one number. Like, over and over, like, three times. The guy is quick on his feet, already up an atom, as soon as the number leaves his lips. Watching him as he maneuvers through the crowd of the other pub goers is enough to tire me out. Fast as he can, he's at the door and throws us a smile. And that's all we get before he's gone. Just like that. Oi, what about your drink, boy? I'll go put it on your tab then. <laughs> Does he drink? Holmes boy always like that, G? Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab, too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. Yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. <laughs> She's snoring. 
mumbling a sleepy thanks I doze off on the spot face pressed on the counter already I dread the pain I'll have her sleeping in such a position but when you gotta go you gotta go oh they're back the are are they on one body or are they just like pressed up against each other like I did that thumbnail because to me it looks like it's one body <laughs> Dearie. Uh, a while. Come join us, Mayan. We won't bite. Or am I gonna join the body? Will I be the third head? Can I be in the middle? Unless you ask, that is. Not that I can get much sleep to begin with. Do people ever have the feeling that they're working on something they really enjoy, but still it eventually tires them out? Because honestly, I've been feeling like this. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous, and in such a short time, too. Though moments like these make all the hard work worth it. Definitely. Because you're in love with Mrs. Wright. Because she looks like your lady friend. Well, I can't take all the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the Wright Mansion. There won't be any more problems unless... Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom? Oh, no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. Oh, yes, this conversation's happened before. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. We're only about halfway done, but the honest satisfaction on the client's face is enough for me to push through. Let's face it, in between my exasperation at Mr. Wright's antics and her... I've been burning at the candle at both ends. I can't even close my eyes without seeing a dead girl's face. Dead girl. Dead. She's dead. I have to keep reminding myself that. Burying myself. Burying my feelings as deep as they've buried her body. Six feet under. I shouldn't waste so much time on someone who's supposed to be gone. I've wasted so many years thinking about her already. There should be no need to bother myself with the dead, when I should be bothering myself with the living. Too bad the living are usually as complicated, if not more, than ghosts of the past. But don't you have a party? Mm, yes, but Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting, he's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. Mm, nah, he cheating on you. Putting more babies in other bitches. Luke Wright. It's even more complicated than the living in question. It is a pair of rich and famous social socialites way past their honeymoon face. And I've been somehow roped into being in a relationship counselor. They've been married for a long time and they've had a... <laughs> how do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle, but if the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Yes. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. Nope. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. Fear is... Mental. Why is she thinking a, sim a single woman like me would have the best source of relationship advice is beyond me. Still, I talk and answer to the best of my abilities. Without realizing it, I'm already pouring out a part of me that I had thought were long gone. I like to believe my words will be of some help to Miss Wright. If I'm honest, though, they are some help to me. Like some weight have been taken off my shoulders. Lorraine. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party. 
Oh, you really must, Marianne. The weight of what happened to her hasn't left me yet, did it? Maybe. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. Maybe it's about time I change that. We'll see. So, if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Though I shouldn't dwell on the dead. I shouldn't just callously forget about them too. Saying that I have work left to do is an easy enough excuse to make. I know how other people see me. They see someone so obsessed with her craft that she should just easily miss things like a party for it. Outside the parlor, people hurry about here and there in preparation for the Wright's grand housewarming party. None spare me a glance as I slip past them, each working on their appropriate roles and not daring to slack off while they work for what is probably the most powerful couple in Luxembourg. I make it into the kitchen with ease, the wine cellar being my final destination. But when there's great task ever simple, probably never. And this is a great task, isn't it? My greatest one yet that is worthy of being called a quest. I'm not acting as Marianne McCulloch, the professional interior designer, when I chose to lie about being too busy for a party. I'm Marianne McCulloch, a lawful neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom and eight in charisma. Just thinking of it like that makes it a bit cheesy. But it helps with the fear. It helps overcome the insane thought that I'm actively seeking out someone that has been plaguing me for years. I might face my worst nightmare, or I might see nothing and find my self-imagined grand quest fall up flat. And who would have thought that the gatekeeper to my final quest would have been someone I thought would be a valuable ally? Snell, hurry up, you snails. We are on a deadline and you are wasting my time. The butler comes through the cellar and into the kitchen, tailed by a couple of others. People who I assume are most likely chefs and bartenders. He raises a brow, seeing me just standing there by the hatch, by the trap door. Well, it almost looks like he's going to throw me out for being in the kitchen without permission. But then he motions to the others and disperse the familiarize and the others to disperse and familiarize themselves with their surroundings. Meanwhile, he continues to stand there, preventing entry to the darkness beyond. What are you doing here, Fraulein? This is not the place for guests or in an architect right now. <laughs> I request you leave. I was just looking around for any last minute things, yes? Yes, you have been doing that a lot. Looking around, snooping about. Now is not the time for such things. If you're not careful, people might think you are up to something. Hmm. The look he gives me as he says this is almost chilling. If life was a game book, he'd probably be the true neutral warlock guarding the treasure room. A difficult opponent to beat with nine points in wisdom and eight in dexterity. Well... I'm not done yet. I actually need to go into the wine cellar. Just need a quick go at the place. So, just don't mind me. I I'll be out of your hair soon enough. Go outside. Enjoy the party. Bask in the praise and adulation they will no doubt shower you with when the madam speaks highly of you. Surely you've had enough of this stuffy old kitchen by now. You do not want to cause trouble. Both the Bratwurst and Hannah want this to be perfect. It would be a disservice and a disrespect to toe out of line and risk it being anything otherwise. And more importantly, I will be blamed for any failure that happens tonight. <laughs> His intervention almost turns me away. Maybe this is a sign I'm not meant to seek Lorraine out, but... Please, I just uh, lost something the last time I was down there. It's really important. Fifteen minutes. Nine. Ten minutes. 
Any longer and I'll pull you out of there myself. The Bratwurst would be furious if he thinks anyone <laughs> is touching his precious vine without his permission. <laughs> Bratwurst. Thank you. This seriously means a lot. He steps aside begrudgingly. At this point, it looks like there's no turning back. And it looks like we're going to have to be at the end of this episode because I am out of time. And we will find out next time what's going to happen inside that cellar. Will she meet Lorraine again or will it be the creepy, grudge, gurgly noise lady that goes, ah. <laughs> Who knows? But we'll find out. This... I'm like, there's a lot of plot lines going on. Like, there's the main one with, like, the uh, haunted mansion and stuff. But then there's, like, a background one with Luke and Ash somehow. And then, like, Marianne is just kind of, like, stuck in the middle of it a little bit. So I'm, I'm wondering what Ash is, like, investigating. If he thinks Luke is behind, like, these murders... Or if it's like some uh, other dirty dealings that haven't been brought up. I forget who's the next person that we should be. Okay. The next person we'll be playing as after Marianne will be Rebecca, I guess. So we probably won't learn anything until we get to at least Ashton's chapter. I'm pretty curious about what Rebecca's chapter will be, because she's, like, barely been in this story at all. <laughs> but we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you're new to the channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I post, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye